So now here's a twist. The U.S. men's national soccer team is heading to the World Cup next week in Qatar. Instead of wearing a red, white, and blue shield, the team is changing it to show a rainbow pattern to make a statement supporting gay pride while in the Muslim nation. Uh, Clay Travis, founder of OutKick here. Trey, good morning to you. Uh, one of your writers at OutKick, Bobby Barak, writes the following. He says, while each other country proudly represents their nation during the World Cup, the U.S. men's team will represent the LGBTQ community. In a way, it's fitting. Pandering has replaced patriotism in the United States, especially in the genre of sports. You see this as a big deal? Well, look, I think Bobby's incredibly talented, and I'm excited that we have so many great writers uh, writing at OutKick every single day. I think this is a little bit unique, Bill, because of the uh, policies in place in Qatar, uh, because this is a direct statement in some way of America's embrace of human rights. But I also think, hey, you know, the shield is iconic. I'm not sure that I necessarily would change it. Players on an individual basis can speak out for human rights around the world, as I think they should. Uh, and I've certainly encouraged in the past athletes representing the United States on the global stage to use the United States and the freedoms that many of us take for granted here as a window into what they believe should exist around the world. Uh, so I think it's a little bit of a unique circumstance given where this is taking place. If we were playing this for instance, in the United States, and they did this, I feel like it would be excessive. Uh, but given where we are in Qatar and the fact that take it outside of the world of LGBTQ rights, you know, you can't even drink a beer hardly in Qatar right now. So I think this is going to be a little bit of a different World Cup to say nothing of the fact that it's happening in the fall, Bill, when you and I are trying to keep track of our favorite NFL teams. Your yeah, Bengals are on the upswing point. a little bit, I yeah, think. And I know Dana <laughs> like does sports. I mean, I know she's plugged in halfway at the NFL season <laughs> here uh, as much as she possibly can be. Yeah, right on. Just, just win, baby. That's the message in Cutter. Now, Elon Musk, I know you follow us yes. very carefully, okay? Uh, there's a few uh, urgent um, headlines crossing on the Reuters uh, wire. Here's one. Uh, the engineering division set to be divided in three different organizations, product, infrastructure, and support. So Musk is reorganizing the company as we speak, but he's also saying, hey, man, we got to make money if we want to stay in business. Here is a leaked email from a few weeks ago, actually five days ago. No way to sugarcoat the message. Twitter will not survive if its business model does not change. Frankly, the economic picture is dire. Especially for a company like ours, it's so dependent on advertising and a challenging economic climate. Many online operations are moving, uh, losing advertising dollars now. It appears that Twitter might be losing more, however. How does he do it? How does he turn to trick to stay successful? Look, Bill, uh, Elon Musk figured out how to land uh, planes in space and bring them back uh, better than NASA. And he managed to determine and build a brand new way to power vehicles after 100 plus years of planning using the combustion engine. So if I had to bet, if I had to bet, a guy who can send space rockets, rockets to space better than NASA and a guy who has completely remade the way that cars are built and the way that we power them in the country, I think he can figure out how you and me and everybody else can pick up our phones and send messages more efficiently uh, because that seems like a relatively small challenge compared to the two that he's uh, I, already tried. I don't disagree so with that. I, I think does, he's going to figure it out. Does he have too many enemies to sink that ship? <laughs> hey, we're on the network that has more enemies than anybody, and you know what it also has more on? Viewers. So uh, I don't worry as much about the people who hate as the people who love. And I think right now that, uh, that Elon Musk has more people who love him and support what he has been capable of in this country, even if his critics sometimes garner a large amount of headlines. I think they're a substantial minority overall, because I think most Americans believe that we should have a robust marketplace of ideas, and that is what ultimately he's committed to at Twitter. We'll see if you can make that kitchen sink bigger. Uh, thank you, Clay. Great to have you back. Clay <laughs> Travis, we'll hear in radio later. Hey, appreciate y'all. Thank you, Clay.